So you wanna use SSH when you connect to GitLab and do those push, pull, fetch, and clone operations. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not too hard to do. All you need to do is generate some GitLab SSH keys, set up those GitLab SSH keys in GitLab, get the SSH URL for your repository, and then just clone using that SSH URL like you would clone any other repository. It's really not that difficult. And if you give me just a few minutes, I am going to get you up to speed on SSH and GitLab and get you connected with SSL. I'm not going to waste your time. The only thing I ask is that when you speak about me, you say nice things and maybe even check out my Git and GitLab tutorial on YouTube. It's two hours long and I'd love for it to get a couple of extra views and a couple of extra likes. Now, if you want to get started with SSH, you have to generate some SSH keys. And on Windows, you do that by opening up Windows PowerShell. And in Windows PowerShell, you just issue the command to generate SSH keys. Now you might be wondering, hey, I'm on Ubuntu. Well, you just open a terminal window on Ubuntu and issue the exact same command. These SSH keys are gonna be created and they're gonna get put in the .SSH folder of the user's home directory. Now, I'm logged in as a user named owner and I've got that home directory open up. And as I said, it would be the same as home directory on Ubuntu as well. And the SSH keys get put in a folder named .ssh. SSH isn't that creative. Um, but you'll notice that I don't have that very uncreatively named .ssh folder on my file system, which means I don't have any SSH keys yet. So I do need to generate them. By the way, if you're having problems with your SSH connection, maybe uh, your existing keys aren't working. So maybe back them up, delete them, and then use this command to regenerate your SSH keys. So if you don't have SSH keys, what's the command to use to generate them? Yeah, just type in SSH keygen. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's one option I like to do. That's the dash O, and it's the type. And I like the URSA types, the RSA types. Um, and I always like to add a comment uh, whenever I generate an SSH key and maybe just mail at mcnz.com, which is my email address. And that is the command. Now, before I click enter here, I just want to bring your attention over to the right hand side and watch as I click enter, a new folder there is going to get created, the .ssh folder, which will contain these GitLab SSH keys. I will be prompted for a few questions before that happens. So as I click enter, it generates those private and public RSA keys. It says, where do you want to save these? The default is .ssh. That's where Git looks for your SSH keys. Don't get creative here. Don't get silly. Don't put them in some other location. That's the default. That's where you want them. So click enter to accept that. It asks for a passphrase. If you want to secure this, I'm going to be lazy and just click enter to have no passphrase. And when we're done, boom, you can see that .ssh folder is created under the user's home directory. And I'm also given a nice Jackson Pollock painting over here, a nice little piece of random art to make me smile and have a great afternoon. Now, I've got these files created. Let's uh, go in and take a look at them. You'll notice that there's two files, a private key and a public key. How do you know which one's public? Well, it's the one that ends with the .pub extension. I need to take a look at that because I need to tell GitLab about that public key. You put your public key on GitLab and then when Git tries to connect, there's a handshake that takes place and the crypto algorithms that validate the private key against the public key take place and authentication is performed for us. But we do need to put that public key up on the server. Now, how do I know this is the public key I generated? Well, you can see right there, I got uh, my email address on it. Who else would put mail at MCNZ in on their public key? So I'm gonna copy that, Control C, we'll do it visually, right click and copy, copy this six ways to Sunday. And now I need to get that public key up to GitLab. So I log into GitLab, I bring up GitLab, then I bring up this, you know, I can never find it. So you got to click on like your profile here and you click on your profile 
and then you say edit profile and then you got to click up there again and you notice a whole bunch of other options appear so it's kind of like I just don't like the fact that that sidebar disappears. I want it there permanently. But you'll notice that one of those links that appears is SSH keys. And where else are we going to put our SSH keys in GitLab other than where GitLab says put your SSH keys here. So I'm going to click on that. Um, it says, hey, do you want to add a new SSH key? And it's like, hey, how did you know? Um, so I'm going to click the add new key button. Paste in that SSH key. It's got a title, got an authentication and signing type. Everything looks good to me. I'll accept the rest of the default and click add key. And boom, the key is now added. Now in theory, I should be able to clone, push, pull and fetch using SSH with GitLab anytime I do a, a command at the command line or in the bash shell. So let's see if that works. I've got a project here on my uh, in my GitLab account. It's called Rock, Paper, Scissors. And so in order to clone and work with a GitLab repository over SSH, um, you'll need to gain access to the SSH URL. And so you do that by clicking on your project, clicking on your repository. So again, I'll go back to my um, user interface here. There's my personal project, rock, paper, scissors. Once I'm in the repository, I click on this friendly blue button. And one of the options is to clone with SSH. I copy that URL. So again, I'll just show it to you up there. That's it there. Make sure that SSH URL gets copied. You know what I mean? It says clone with SSH. Then I come down over here onto my file system and I've got a folder called repos. I right click, I say open git bash here. With git bash open, I issue the git clone command with that URL. I click enter with extreme vengeance and prejudice. Now it says to me, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, are you sure you wanna do this? The, the authenticity of GitLab can't be established. Is that some shady organization? <laughs> no, that's not shady. That's a great organization. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Of course I do. So I type in yes. It says we permanently added GitLab to the list of known hosts. And then it's going to go up there and it's going to clone that repository and bring all of that code down. And if you don't believe me, you can just go over here, open up the rock, paper, scissors folder that was just cloned. And there's the index and there is the readme file. And if I come over here, you notice there's the index and the readme file up on the server. So I've effectively cloned that GitLab repository with SSH. So what's next? Well, um, you know, when you're working with any, you know, Git based operating system, Git based SaaS tool, Git based hosting service like GitLab or GitHub or Bitbucket, the, the yin and yang is this. You first clone the remote repository, then you start adding files, editing files, and then the files that you want Git to track, you add to Git staging index. Then you do a commit, and then you push those commits back to the server. Um, you can actually do the whole uh, adding, staging the file, then committing all in one if you use the dash A switch with your commit, but you still have to push. Um, and then that gets your changes up to the server. If somebody else makes changes in order to get their changes down to your local machine, you do a pull. Optionally, you can do a, a fetch and a merge too, but that's the, the basic yin and yang of working with Git and GitLab. So why don't I come over here and just create a new text document and I'll call it alpha.txt. So now I've got a new file created in this repository. I'm going to open up the git bash shell and ask about my status, git status, and it will say to me, there's a file named alpha.txt that's untracked, and I'll be like, well, let's track that. Git add that to the tracking index, the staging index. So alpha.txt gets added. I can now ask for the status again, and we're told, Everything's good. All we need to do is commit. I'm the type of man that does what he's told and I'm not afraid of commitment. So I'll say git commit dash M, I don't know, SSH GitLab example will be a, a bad git commit message. 
So now we've done the commit. Now we want to push these files up to the server. And as you can see, we currently only have the GitLab CI YAML file, the readme and the index.html on the server. We want to push alpha.txt up there. So we just say git push, click enter, and boom, it gets sent up to the server using SSH. Come over here, do a quick refresh, and you can see, boom, all of a sudden we now have alpha.txt on the server. So now we're doing GitLab SSH pushes using these uh, GitLab SSH keys that we generated. Um, and so that's the push. So we saw the clone, we saw the push. Um, now, of course, if somebody else adds something to the server, would we want to do a pull? So we can actually simulate that here. I can actually create a new file up on GitLab using the web interface for GitLab. So I'll go in there, say, create a new file. And let's see, what will we name it? Well, we'll call it bravo.txt, hello. SSH GitLab example world. There we go. Commit the changes. And so now we've got the opposite situation, right? Our server is out of sync with our local file system. Our local file system is one commit behind. It doesn't have Bravo. So again, how do we solve this? Well, it's easily solved. We just say git pull. And the pull will cause us the cause Git to locally pull the changes from the server, doing that GitLab SSH key handshake behind the scenes. So we say Git pull, and boom! All of a sudden, you now see Bravo.txt at the file system, and things are are in sync once again. So there you go. That's how easy it is to set up SSH keys in GitLab. You just generate the keys, find them in the .ssh folder, copy the public key, set up the SSH public key in GitLab, get the SSH URL, then clone using that SSH URL, and then everything should go swimmingly from there on in. By the way, if you do get an SSH public key permission denied error, one of the things I suggest is going into GitLab, deleting the existing keys up in GitLab, and then deleting the keys in the .ssh folder locally and recreating them. Now you might want to back those keys up before you do it, or you might want to get permission to make sure no one else is using the keys that you're deleting up on GitLab, right? If you're working in a team, maybe just deleting everything off the face of the earth isn't the greatest strategy. But if this is something you're doing locally, just trying to get things set up initially, that is a good strategy, right? Eliminate as many variables as possible. So there you go. Uh, that's how easy it is to just get up get set up with SSH and GitLab. Now, I did ask you two things. I said, if you got this working, do me two favors. Speak nicely of me and check out my Git and GitLab tutorial that's two hours, very complete, and I think you'll really enjoy it. It needs some views, so give it a like up and share it with your friends. If you're interested in any of the stuff that I'm doing, uh, my name's Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on Git and GitLab and DevOps tools. Java, Python, Scrum, Agile, you name it. Um, I'm also doing a lot of work in the AI and machine learning space right now. And there's a new programming language poised to replace Python called Mojo. Uh, if you're in the software development state, it it space, it behooves you to really learn about this new programming language. And I talk about a lot of that in my newsletter. So there's a link to my newsletter in the description if you want to keep up to the date on the very latest trends that are going on in the software development industry, you really need to, to sign up for that newsletter. Um, I do have a couple of books. So I wrote a book called Pickering is Springfield and Hibernate Made Easy. Those are in the back. And I'm also working with a young freelancer named Darcy DeClute who just published the Scrum Master Certification Guide. So if you're agile, you know anybody interested in getting Scrum Master certified, that is the only book you need. And there you go. That's about it. Um, I don't know what else to say other than the fact that if you're watching this on YouTube, give this a thumbs up, put a comment in the comment section, and subscribe on YouTube.